Well, NASA is bringing a four-person crew back from the International Space Station due to medical issues. It's the first evacuation of its kind. US, Russian and Japanese astronauts undocked from the station after five months in space. NASA has declined to disclose which crew member has the health problem or give details about the issue, but the US Space Agency has stressed that the return isn't an emergency. It's great to welcome Keith Cowing back to DW. He's editor of nasawatch.com. Hi, Keith. Now, this is the first medical evacuation from the ISS in its 25-year history. We don't know what the exact medical problem is, but it's evidently serious enough to cut the mission short. How are you reading into this? Well, I could take it from my personal experience. I've been on expeditions to multiple ones to the Canadian Arctic up near the North Pole, the Himalayas, uh, where it's dangerous, you're far from help, and you have to really, really rely on your training, your background. You don't want to find yourself in these places saying, oh, my God, what do I do? You want to have plans and then plans and plans on top of that. If somebody, and I don't know who it is or what's wrong with them, if someone was really, really sick, they could have been home in a matter of hours. They just get the suits on, push a button, and come home. The fact that it takes a few days and they're all happy and smiling makes me think that if anything, it's probably something as simple as they don't have a CAT scanner up there. They have a lot of medical devices and medicines, but there's some medical gear that you just don't have in space. And to adequately help this person, uh, the smart thing is to bring them home. And they're more or less at the end of their stay up there. So a lot of work has not been sacrificed as a result. But this is not an emergency. It's just a, a, an expedited or a quick or a short end to a long trip. OK. It's not an emergency, but could you give us any insights into the type of types of medical issues that could arise in space or are most common as the environment really is so unique? Well, when you're weightless for a long period of time, first, when you go up there, half the people get sick, but you're over that after a day or two or three. But after a few months, if you don't exercise, your bones start to lose calcium, as a few percent every month. Um, your The fluids in your body, which are normally pulled down by gravity, start to float up. So people start to get puffy faces, but then that redistributes, but that affects your heart. Your brain, they've just discovered, may move a little bit in your head. You can have eye problems. All these things usually sort of resolve and you get used to, you adapt to being in space, but not perfectly. And a lot of times when you come home, you have problems with your back or something like that. I don't know what happened. It could be that somebody suddenly had an irregular heartbeat or they pulled their you know, shoulder out or something. I don't know. It's significant enough to bring them home to give them perfect treatment, but not bad enough that you have to stop what you're doing and get home you know, in a couple of hours. Keith, just over a minute before the end of the show, could you just briefly tell us what the medical checks for astronauts look like before they go into space? Well, you first of all, you keep them in isolation for a couple of weeks to make sure that they're not going to have the flu or COVID or anything like that or give it to each other and so forth. You get regular checkups like you... A very perfect example would be what a pilot or pilot would go through. You have a very extensive medical checks a couple of days before, and then, you know, they take your pulse and how are you feeling and so forth. And then there was a lot of self-reporting. The crew mm. was honest about how they're doing. And then they get, the, get in the rocket and they go into space. Thanks a lot for that, Keith. Really appreciate your insights. That's Keith Cowing, the editor of nasawatch.com. My pleasure.